Good morning. We are so glad you are here with us at Cornerstone this morning. If you are watching online, we are glad you have chose to worship the Lord with us today. Join us in song. Grab your Bible. Be ready when the Word is taught and preached this morning. Let's worship Him for He's worthy of our praise. Amen? Amen. Join in with us with song. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. For he has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. For he has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. Help us out this morning. Put your hands together. Amen. You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. Oh, oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Sing that again. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you done great things. You've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive. You break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. Oh, we dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Oh God, you have done great things. Give the Lord praise. Give Him glory. Let's continue to worship Him this morning. You called me from the grave by name. You called me out of all my shame. I see the old has passed away. The new has come. Now I have resurrection power. Living on the inside, Jesus. You have given us freedom. I'm no longer bound by sin and darkness. Living in the light of your goodness. You have given us freedom. Oh, I'm dressed in your royalty. Your Holy Spirit lives in me. Oh, I see my past has been redeemed. 
the new has come. Now I have resurrection power living on the inside, Jesus. You have given us freedom. Oh, I'm no longer bound by sin and darkness. Living in the light of your goodness. You have given us freedom, freedom. You have given us freedom. You have given us freedom. My chains are gone. Oh, freedom. You have given us freedom. You have given us freedom. Hallelujah. Oh, freedom. You have given us freedom. You have given us freedom. My chains are gone. Yes, freedom. You have given us freedom. You have given us freedom. Oh, hallelujah. Now I have resurrection power. inside and I'm no longer bound by sin and darkness I'm living in the light of your goodness you have given us freedom now I have resurrection power living on the inside Jesus you have given us freedom and I'm no longer by sin and darkness I'm living in the light of your goodness you have given us freedom now I have resurrection power living on the inside Jesus you have given us freedom and I'm no longer bound by sin and darkness living in the light of your goodness you have given us freedom. Give the Lord praise. Give him glory. Amen. Brother Rob. Well, I want to welcome each and every one of you to Cornerstone today or this morning. Uh, those that are watching online and those that are here in person, I want to say that there's a child sitting with my wife. Uh, okay. So anytime she adopts another child, I worry. We have seven kids, so it's a terrifying thought. Um, I thought we were done with Lily, but uh, she has a new one. So anyway, praise God for that. I tell you, family is an amazing thing. Um, I'm just so glad that we can worship together. Um, I did want to make a couple of real quick announcements, nothing too major, but we are open for church on Sunday night and Wednesday night. So we started last week. Yes, it's finally good to actually be able to meet and be open. So tonight... There is a ministry opportunity for those who want to partake in a youth-led event, which is serving ice cream. So there will be the servers, which is the youth, and there will be the receivers, which is the congregation. So, Wolf, I'm looking at you. I know you may not be allowed to eat ice cream, but I read, I read just this last week, the USDA said it was safe to eat ice cream at church. Amen. Now, for you who don't know... <laughs> For y'all, any of y'all who do not, do not know what that means, the United States Department of Agriculture, that is a big deal. That's the government, and they're telling us it's okay. So we know we can trust the government, right? So Sherry, you bring him, and even if he doesn't want to, you can give him a taste, all right? So anyway, I'm just glad that everybody's here this morning. I do want to, I do want to read a scripture. Now this is, sorry, uh, this is in Philippians. If y'all could stand, I think this one is worthy of standing. I think all scripture is, but I want to read this one. This is in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, and it says, For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now that's the big word. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let me, let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, I just ask that you will open our eyes 
that you give us a willingness to hear your word this morning as Pastor Jim brings this. I ask that you will guide us into your truth. And Lord, I pray that we will exalt you to lordship in our life. It is in Jesus' name, the name above all name I pray, names, I pray this. Amen. Praise the Lord. Continue to stand with us as we continue to worship him. He's worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. Oh, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, and what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. What can wash away our sin? What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash us pure as snow? Welcomed as the friends of God. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Your blood, it speaks a better word than all the empty claims I've heard upon this earth. It speaks righteousness for me. Oh, it stands in my defense. Lord Jesus, it's your blood. Oh, I can wash away our sin. Make us whole again. Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash us pure as snow? Welcomed as the friends of God. Nothing but your blood, nothing but your blood, King Jesus. Your cross. It testifies of grace, tells of the Father's heart to make a way for us. Oh, now boldly we approach, not by earthly confidence. No, it's only by His blood, by His blood. What can wash away our sins? What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes, what can wash us pure as snow? Welcomed as the friends of God. Nothing but your blood, nothing but your blood, King Jesus. What can wash away our sin? What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash us pure as snow? Welcome as the friends of God. Nothing but your blood. Nothing but your blood, King Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but your blood, King Jesus. Salvation is found in one place and one place only, and that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh. 
Oh, there is a river of gladness that pours from Emmanuel's veins. This sinner was plunged beneath that flood and got saved. Since then I walk in forgiveness. All of my guilt was erased. Oh, the chains of the past, oh, it's broken at last. I got saved. Oh, I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I got Jesus. How could I want more? I've received nothing but goodness. I've tested, I've tasted your grace. Oh, I was so lost till I fell at the cross and got saved. Oh, I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I got Jesus. How could I want more? The love of God. Oh, it gave me his pardon. The love of God, it won't let me stay the same. The love of God, oh, it pulls me up higher. His will is stronger, that's why I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I got Jesus. How could I want more? I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I got Jesus. How could I want more? I've got Jesus. How could I want more? I've got Jesus. How could I want more? The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen could ever tell it goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell the guilty pair bowed down with Could 
the scroll contain the whole those stretched from sky to sky hallelujah the Lord. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. He's worthy of our praise. Amen. 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 I walked by the tomb of Buddha Oh, I looked inside and I saw his bones I traveled on to see Mohammed Still wrapped up in his grave close then I journeyed to a garden where old Joseph let him lay our precious lamb God's own begotten Oh, he's no longer in that grave. If you knew him like I know him, you would see that, oh, he's alive. If you failed him, Oh, like I feel him, resurrection down deep inside. You know he's living and death has died. If you're walking through the darkness, won't you come into the light? Oh, nail-pierced hands, they'll lead you safely from death to life. Oh, friend, I too I have stood where you stand Oh, could I trust in things unseen Oh, but just one step in His direction And in love He came to me 
if you knew him oh like i know him you could see that oh he's alive if you felt him oh like i feel him resurrection down deep inside you know he's living and death has died you ask me how oh i know he lives within my heart if you failed him oh like i feel him resurrection deep inside he's living and death has died death has died. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bibles, please turn to the book of Job, chapter 21, and somebody's got my Bible, I need it. So, uh, praise the Lord. You know, George, how in the world did you end up with it, my brother? Thank you, my brother George, I appreciate that. Love you, rascal. Amen. Good, love you, rascal. At least there'll be one decision this morning. I'll preach on the Eighth Commandment. You know what that is, don't you, Brian? Thou shalt not steal. But anyway, uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Job chapter 21. We hope when you came in this morning you got an outline entitled Prophets. If you do not have an outline, would you please raise your hand? Everybody needs to have an outline. And if you need one, uh, raise your hand high. Our men will be sure to get them to you. Everyone needs to have an outline. Job chapter 21. Job chapter 21. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. Let me do a little announcements here. There's going to be some changes, guys. I'm just uh, giving you a fair warning about some things that's going to be happening here uh, for God's glory, for our good and God's glory. You know, uh, two things made Cornerstone what it was and what it is. Well, they both start with S. First of all, is supplication. I knew I'd just about two or three because many of you forgot how this church started was in a home in Wiley with 14 people on our knees. This church was born, birthed, and bathed in prayer. Seems like we got a, kind of lost our way along the way. That's going to change. Because if we want God's blessings upon this church instead of having this mentality of us four no more, we got to get back to make the praying thing the main thing, and that's prayer. Amen. The other thing seemed like we lost on the way is not just supplication, but soul winning. Amen. Can I have an amen choir? Amen. This church was built to reach people for Jesus. Amen. This church was not built for me. It was not built for you. It was built for those on the outside. That's the priority, has always been, and always will be. Prayer and reaching people for Jesus. We need to have a welcome committee. There's a young lady that's outside meeting, but we need people outside greeting and meeting people. Go to Victory with me tonight where I'll preach at 6 o'clock. There'll be a parking lot full of at least 55, 75 people on the park. Scott, would you stand up, Scott? You, I, I, I want you to know he's been there look up here guys that church is full of people 50 to 75 people Sunday morning on the parking lot greeting people 
for it to ever get in this place. We got to love people. We got to know that they're welcome here. I heard a statement the first time I came last week from somebody who said, oh, we were betting whether or not you was coming to this church. They did not say that of me. They said it's somebody who's visiting here. Well, let me tell you, we need to stop betting on who's coming and start praying that people come. Let me tell you this, guys. You can't fire me. Because you didn't call me here. This church, God is blessed in spite of all of us. And he's blessing again. But we got to love people. I don't know what all you're doing back there. I want everybody, everybody eyes up here. Job chapter 21, let's stand in honor of God's word together. Now you are screaming and shouting with the singing, and let's get some screaming and shouting for the word of God. Oh, that was about as phony as I've ever heard in my life. But keep it up. <laughs> Now, you got that from Brian. I texted Brian this morning and said, looking forward to Jesus' day. And he said, amen, bring it. Good. I want you to keep your Bibles open. Do not turn to the right or to the left this morning. We're going to be in Job. We're going to be looking at other scriptures that you're in the outline. But our main scripture is Job, chapter 21, verse 15. Would you look at it with me? With, ask the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart and mind. Job chapter 21. Kimberly, you didn't think I didn't see you, did you? You snuck in on me. I waited outside as long as I could, and you came through the back door. I love you, and it's good to see you. Good to have you, young man. Praise the Lord. You can run, but you can't hide, Kimberly. Job chapter 21, verse 15. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit? The title of the message this morning is what? What profit should we have if we pray unto him? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Let's all pray this prayer together, please. Everyone praying with me from your heart and from your lips. Dear Jesus, please speak to my heart today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. It's interesting when you study the Old Testament, how many, how many times people questioned the value and profit of divine things, the things of God. There are a number of times, but I want to look at three this morning. And all three of these scriptures got the word profit in it. I want us to begin with Malachi, the first one, because the people in Malachi's day, if you're taking notes, number one, they questioned the value and profit of serving God. Would you fill that in your blanks? Point number one, the people of Malachi's day questioned the value and profit of serving God. Look, look at what they said in Malachi 3.14. Are you with me? It's in your outline. You have said it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we should keep his ordinance. Guys, I want to give you five reasons this morning, and five is the number of grace. Amen? Amen. Five reasons for every one of us here as born-again believers, not bench, warner, bench warmers, but people who have been born of the Spirit of God, why each and every one of us here should have a servant's heart. We've not all been called to preach. We've not all been called to teach. We've not all been called to sing. But we've all been called to serve Jesus. Amen. Whether sitting out on that, standing out in the parking lot and shaking somebody's hand, that's a service. Being involved in our prayer ministry, that's a service. Whether passing out these outlines, that's a service. 
God, there's a place to serve Jesus. Look up here, guys. Apparently in America today, it's no, no different than Malachi's day because people in America and our churches across America are asking, what's the profit and value of serving God? You know how I know they're asking that? Because only 20% of the people inside the church serve God. Choir, can I have an amen, please? God bless you back there. You know another thing's going to change, guys? We're going to get some banners back in here. There's not one thing that looks like about Jesus. There used to be only sinners welcome here, but we took that off. Well, I want you to know only sinners are still welcome here. We used to have about, you tell me one thing, except that cross, because you couldn't take that down because it's too big and too heavy. There's going to be some changes, guys. Some of you are going to like them, some of you are not. But guess what? This is America. If you don't like it here, there's plenty of churches that love for you to come and serve them. But let me tell you, while we're here, people are going to walk in. They know this is a Jesus church. Amen. It ain't no Baptist church. Right. Hello, please. Oh, it's good to see some of y'all gun shy again. Oh, my God. We've had five years of freedom. Five years they didn't yell and scream at us. Guys, let me tell you, 20% of the people do 100% of the work in our churches. So you see, don't get on the folks in Malachi's day too hard. Today, we have people inside our churches who question the value of of serving the Lord. Let me give you five reasons why we as God's people, I'm not talking about the folks who are visiting here, not a member here, but I'm talking about folks who are part of this fellowship. And whether you're a part of it or not, wherever you attend, you need to be a servant. Number one, we ought to serve Jesus. Would you write it down? Because God created us to serve. God created us to serve. Does anyone have an extra pen? I need an extra pen, please. An extra pen. Jan and Dick still only have one pen. I was their pastor for 15 years. They didn't have a pen for 15 years that I was here. And she's still passing her pen. Anyway, that's what you get when you sit too close. Go, and I'm watching you real close. Guys, the Bible says, look at your outline. See what the Word of God says in Ephesians. It says, Paul said, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You know why we ought to have a servant's heart? Because that's what God created us to be. We got plenty of chiefs in our churches. But where's the Indians at? Hello? Woo! God created you and I to serve, have a servant's heart. Not everybody waiting on you, waiting on me like we're big daddy, you big mama. God created us to serve, not to sit. Number two, we should have a servant's heart because God saved us to serve. Not only did he create us to serve, but he saved us to serve. Guys, if you wonder why God saved you, you say, well, he saved me from hell. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. But you see, that's later. He saved you to serve now. God never called, look up here. God never called anyone to salvation that he didn't call to serve him. Y'all want to vote on that? If God saved you, he saved you to serve him. We can all do something. Pass out this. That's having a servant's heart. Working with the kids. When that opens up, I can't wait for my twins to come back to church. They're at my house this morning waiting for Papa to show up. Josh finally came back to church after eight months. My God. Look up here, please. But when that nursery opens up, Diane's going to need some help. This daycare ministry is going to continue to grow. We're going to need some servants. If you're looking for a job, don't come here. We're looking for ministry. We've been saved to serve. Number three, would you write it down? We've been empowered to serve. People say, man, I can't do it. I, 
I, I'm just not strong enough. I, I just don't have talent enough. Let me tell you, when God saved you, he filled you up with the Holy Spirit of God. He's the Christian's energizer. He'll give you strength to serve him. We can't even walk without him holding our hands. God empowers us to serve him, whatever that is. He empowers us. He don't want you and I to serve him in our own strength. You know why? I pastored for 40 years, mister, and I can tell you this. I've seen people come to church who serve the Lord in their own strength. You know how I know? Because they were always gripping and complaining. Well, they said they was going to be here this morning to help me in the Sunday school class. Oh, they are going to be here this morning. They signed up. Get your eyes off them and get your eyes on him. What? Are you out there, please? God empowers us to serve him. We can't do nothing on our own. Is there any profit in serving Jesus? Number four, you can write this down as a child of God. You ought to serve him because of the judgment seat of Christ. Well, we got three amens and about 15 oh me's. Everybody look up here. The next event in Bible prophecy is the rapture. Not the November 3rd election. You see, the next event in Bible prophecy is the rapture. And the Bible says that when Jesus comes, he's going to catch us up, and then we're going to stand before him at the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ as Christians. Look up here, Mr. Christian. He said, well, I, I thought my sins were judged at Calvary. They were. This judgment seat of Christ is not for our salvation. It's for our service. We're all going to be judged as God's people at the judgment seat of Christ. Of what did we? What did you do for Jesus? What? What? What did you? At the jump, Jesus is going to say, "What did you do for me?" And the criteria for that judgment seat in the New Testament, I preached on it hundreds of times in forty of years. The criteria for the judgment seat of Christ is, "What did you and I do for Jesus down here, and why did we do it?" Are we doing what we do for the applause of men or for the approval of God? Say amen to that. We do what we do for the glory of God. I texted Ricky this morning, as I do every morning. I texted him and I asked him this question. What is the sole purpose of our lives? I, I'm glad you said that, Mike, because you're wrong again. Woo! Isn't that good? You can always catch him. Hey, Brian, it's good, Brian. He's always, you know. They, they forgot, hadn't they, Brian? You're not supposed to answer. <laughs> but Mike's still learning. Two words. Look up here. Everybody, please. I texted to Ennis Brooks in Albany, Texas this morning. I said, Brother Ennis, as we text every morning. I texted to Sherry Wolf this morning. She said, that's my life first, Brother Jim. Here's the question. Two words will sum up our purpose for being here. Two words as a Christian. Are you out there, please? Just two words sum up why we're here as Christians. Two words. Here they are. Glorify God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, whatever you do, you do for the glory of God. Are you out there, please? Let me tell you something, guys. You know why we serve Jesus? Because there's judgment coming one of these days. The Bible says, God, Jesus will give you five crowns. You and I can earn five crowns. Five. There's only five that we can earn. I preached on those crowns before here. Like a lot of other things, you forgot that too. But let me just tell you, there are five crowns that we can receive from Jesus, the judgment seat of Christ. And if we served him for his glory, and we served him through the power of his Holy Spirit, the Bible says Jesus is going to give you a crown. Say, man, I'm going to get to wear that crown in heaven? No, cowboy. The Bible says in Revelation, we're going to give those crowns, we're going to lay them at the feet of Jesus. I'm going to ask you something, sir. What are you going to lay at the feet of Jesus? What are you going to lay at the feet of Jesus for all he's done for you? The people said in Malachi's day, what profit is it from serving the Lord? <laughs> are we on number five yet? You better say yes so we can get out of here. Look up here, please. George, I told you. Uh, I want to give you one word. Don't put it on the screen yet, Maddie. 
I want to give you one word that ought to be the greatest motivation. Forget those other four. Forget them. I want to give you one word. That ought to be the greatest motivation for you and I as God's people to want to serve Jesus. One word. Would you write it down? Calvary. Would you write down the word Calvary? And guys, if you and I can look at Calvary, that old rugged cross there, the emblem of suffering and shame, if we can look at the cross and remember the suffering Jesus paid for your sins and mine, that ought to motivate us to want to do something for him. God, help us. Time's running out. Jesus is coming soon. People said, Lord, is there any profit in serving you? I want you to notice, secondly, in Genesis, there was a man by the name of Esau. Everybody look up here, please. You can write it down in a minute. Look. The people of Malachi's day questioned the value and profit of serving God. There was a man by the name of Esau. It was Isaac's son. See, Isaac had two boys, Esau and Jacob. Esau was his oldest son. Esau questioned the value and the profit. Would you write it in your outline, outline of spiritual blessings? You know what? God wants to bless you and I. Say amen to that. We serve a good God. And he wants to bless your home. He wants to bless your family. He wants to bless your life, mister. Look at what Esau said. Look at your outline. You remember the story there in Genesis. But look, underscore the word prophet there in your outline. Genesis chapter 25, verse 32. And Esau questioned the value of prophet and spiritual blessings. When he said, and Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. What prophet shall this birthright do to me? Everybody look up here. Esau was a hunter. Isaac was a sissy boy. Are you out there, please? Like some of you. But Esau was a hunter. And his daddy loved him. Guess who loved Isaac most? His mama. He was a mama boy. Oh, that's my boy. That's my baby. Oh, that's my little baby boy. You know how I know that? Because I was the baby of my family. <laughs> loved every minute of it, my friends. My older brother and sister hated me. <laughs> What a blessing. But you see, the Bible says Esau loved uh, I, I, Jacob. I mean, Isaac loved Esau because he was a hunter. He was a man's man. Amen. Isaac liked to stay in the house, cook, sew, clean. Kathy, you taking notes? Look up here, please. Everybody look up here. That baby's fine. I wish some of you would get loose. Look up here, please. One day, old Esau came home from hunting. He was tired and he was hungry. And Isaac was in there fixing meatloaf, mashed potatoes, green beans, black-eyed peas, mama's 40-weight gravy. Esau came in and said, man, I'm hungry, boy. Give me something to eat. Isaac said, I'll give you something to eat if you'll give me your birthright. I want your birthright. He said, man, what's the birthright going to do to me? I'm starving to death. I'll give you my birthright. Take it. Look up here, friends. That was the most costly meal ever purchased in the Bible. When Esau sold his birthright for some lentil peas, Look at what he said. Look at your outline, please. Genesis 25, 34 says, Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Everybody look up here, please. Please. Esau, look up here. Like a lot of Americans today. Esau lived for the physical, the material, and here and now. He had no thought about eternal things. He was more concerned about earthly things, hunting and eating, filling his gut, material things, than he was eternal things. Look up here, friends. 
When he sold his birthright that day, the word despise means to take lightly. Look up here, church. There are many of you watching by way of, 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 uh, of internet, online. God bless you. We're glad you're here. But let me tell you, there are people today in our church who are despising, taking lightly spiritual things. And it cost Esau three things. Would you write it down? When he despised his birthright, question whether or not is there any value in spiritual blessings. Number one, he lost his paternal blessing. His paternal blessing. Everybody look up here, please. You know what the paternal blessing was? You see, the firstborn in the Old Testament got a double portion of his dad's inheritance. You see, as the oldest son, he got twice as much as the other children. But when Esau despised his birthright, he lost that paternal blessing. Number two, he lost his judicial blessing. Write it down. He lost his judicial blessing. You see, the firstborn was to be the head of the family. He had judicial authority over the family. They did what he said. The, the oldest son, look up here, church, governed his family. He governed his brothers and sisters. He had the final say making decisions. That's the judicial blessing of being the firstborn. But you know what Esau said? I don't care. I'm hungry. But look up here. Please don't put it down until I tell you to. Please don't put this on the outline. Oh, it's already up there. It's okay. Look up here. Look up here. Don't matter. Look up here. The greatest thing that Esau lost when he took lightly his spiritual blessings was not just his paternal blessing and his judicial blessings. He lost his spiritual blessings. Now I want all you daddies, you men, look up here at me right now. Ladies, you can look down. I want the men to look at me. The firstborn in the Old Testament was the spiritual priest and the spiritual leader of his family. He got to lead his children to Jesus. He got to lead his family in daily devotions. He got to lead his family spiritually. He saw that don't mean nothing to me. I'm hungry. Man, I'm starving to death. What does that mean? What does that mean to me? Please look up here. Esau despised his birthright and he lost his paternal blessings, his judicial blessings, and his spiritual blessings for a cheap bowl of soup. I'm going to walk outside and walk back in until you say amen to that. Everybody look up here, please. Please. George, I didn't tell you to turn your outline over. Look up here. Everybody look up here, please. George, that too. One more, you're going to be outside. Look up here. Everybody look up here, please. Boy, it's good to be back home. You said you're going to be here a year, is that right? Well, you better start praying. Here's the sad thing, Brian. I love Jerry Falwell Jr. I love his daddy. I forgive Jerry Falwell Jr. Just by the grace of God, there goes I. You hear me? I've seen thousands of Americans in the church and out of the church who've lost their families, who's lost their homes, who's lost their marriages, and who's lost their testimony for a cheap bowl of soup. Yeah. I've known pastors, staff members, 40 years, nearly 50 years preaching the gospel, nearly 50 years. And I've seen youth pastors, music pastors, preachers, staff members lose it all. They said, what does this spiritual blessing mean to me? And they sell it all for a cheap bowl of soup. <laughs> 
King David was a man after God's own heart. But he lost his testimony for a cheap bowl of soup. And any time I think of David, my hero in the Bible, I think about a man after God's own heart, but also think about Bathsheba. And so do you, little hypocrite. Because you can't thank him now for what he sold. His testimony for a cheap bowl of soup. I'm speaking to some of you men here. I'm speaking to myself. This is the message this morning. I had to get the introduction out of the way. Because the most important thing I've got to say this morning and is this last point. Because I shared with you the two things that made Cornerstone Baptist Church what it was, what it is, and what it's going to continue to be if we want God's presence here. Not have just us four no more here. We're not trying to take chairs out. We're trying to bring chairs in. What blessed my heart last Sunday, the first Sunday I was back, I got here at 6 o'clock. I slept in a little bit. I was up at 4.30, but I didn't get to the church till 6 o'clock last Sunday. And when I got here, Brother Rob Blevins was on the front row praying. I remember when there used to be a whole group of men here. This morning I was so, last Sunday I was so embarrassed, I told Brother Rob, I got here this morning at five. <laughs> Foot up the parking lot, didn't see us talking to go, thank God! <laughs> Not really. But you know what, the pastor is to be the leader. But I thank God for that man of God right there. I came in, this church has got so fancy now, we got security things, I walked in, buzzer started buzzing, the lights came on, I ran outside. I told Rob, my God, y'all got a secure. I, don't know what to, I, didn't know what to, I thought the police was coming. It didn't start raining here at about five minutes till six, so I was hung outside waiting for the police to come. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Brett. Thanks for the heads up. And by the way, we need to have security. I'm not all against that. I'm just, look up here. The point is, there was a time this church knew what prayer meant. I ask you to keep Job 21, 15 open because in Malachi, the people questioned the value of serving God. Esau questioned the value of spiritual blessings. But the people of Job's day, would you write it in your outline? They questioned supplication. They said, what's the profit in praying? Why should we pray? Would everyone look at Job 21, 15 again with me? I want everyone to read it out loud. I don't care what translation you got. You got your cell phone. Would everyone read Job 21, 15, and it says this. What is the all... Wait a minute, everybody look up here. I'm watching your lips. And about half of you are saying it, and the other half... This is a good time for you to flop your lips, not get in trouble. Would everyone read this verse out loud with Job 21, 15? What is... Guys, look up here. These people questioned whether or not there was any value in serving Jesus. I'm not going to do all this message here because some of you already lost you. And it's a dirty, rotten shame. But I I, I want us to look. We're going to skip down. We're not going to do this whole deal. I want us to go to where it says the foolish, the number two, the foolish attitude. Do you all see where it says number two, the foolish attitude? Does everyone see the foolish attitude? Number two, would you fill in the blanks? Notice the foolish attitude these people had concerning the prophet of prayer. We're just going to look at the last two. Because some of you have already said goodbye. 
there's ever been a time God's people need to be praying for America, it's now. Our country needs more prayer than it ever has since its beginning. And we're praying less in our churches. That prayer room sits empty. They said, Brother Michael, I love you and your family. Love your daddy. Brother Michael's dad retired last Sunday in Modesto, California. I had a wonderful visit with his daddy, Stuart, because I love to listen to talk because he talks like an Englishman. He talks like David Nix. Good day. Me and his dad had a wonderful time visiting pastor to pastor. Said my son's been praying for a church home. And him and his family, bless God, I found one at Cornerstone. Look up here, please. They said, Deborah, they said, does it does it profit? What profit is it in prayer? I want to ask four people. Look up here. Actually, I have five, but I was just going to look at four. I want to ask four people this question. Is there any profit in prayer? Would you fill in the blanks? Let's ask number one, the sinner. Number one, let's ask the sinner, is there profit in prayer? <laughs> you know what? Brother George couldn't get saved unless he prayed the sinner's prayer. Amen. Are you all out there, please? You know, that's us, that's us, every one of us here who've been saved. You didn't get saved unless you prayed the sinner's prayer. Ask the lost people if there's profit in prayer. <laughs> Ask the thief on the cross. He was hanging there about to die and he turned to Jesus and prayed, Lord, would you remember me today? And Jesus said, today shall be with me in Today you should be with me in paradise. Ask him if there's any profit in prayer. Ask him when we see him in heaven one of these days. Ask that dying thief. <laughs> Ask Ricky Nelson who was on drugs. Lost his first family because of drugs. Ask this young man. Ask him if there's any profit in prayer. Ask Gene Johnson back there. Ask David Wolf back there. Ask him if there's any profit in prayer. These drug addicts, alcoholics. Ask them. <laughs> prayer to Jesus can turn a rebellious heart into a redeemed heart. <laughs> prayer to Jesus can turn a hell-bound sinner like me into a heaven-bound saint for God's glory. Friends, if you're saved this morning, you better thank God for prayer. Because you can't get saved without the sinner's prayer. Brian, they asked, those people in Job, they asked, is there any profit in prayer? Let's ask number two, would you write it down? Not just the sinner, let's ask the saints. Let's ask the saints if there's any profit in prayer. Guys, look up here. <laughs> I got to calm down because I got to preach again tonight. But let me tell you something. Let's ask. Let's ask Elijah on top of Mount Carmel when he prayed and God answered by fire. Amen. Let's ask Elijah if there's profit in prayer. How about Moses? Let's ask Moses. Moses, is there any profit in prayer when the Red Sea divided? Let's ask Abraham who prayed and became a friend of God. <laughs> Let's ask Joshua who prayed and the walls came tumbling down. 
Ask these saints of God. Ask them. Is there any prophet in prayer, Daniel? Is there any prophet when they threw you in the lion's den? Did God answer your prayers? He came out and said, look, not a bite on me. Them too. How about David? David, is there a prophet in prayer? Ask him that when he fought, fought the giant. Fought a giant by the name of Goliath. <laughs> How about Solomon? Solomon prayed, and the Bible says he became the wisest man that ever lived. You want wisdom? Ask God. James 1 5 says, if any man lacks wisdom, you gotta ask God. You gotta pray about it. Reason some of you don't have any was, oh, you got a bunch of foolish knowledge. But only wisdom comes from God, and the only way you get it is not putting the Bible up to your ear and saying, mm, you look like Steve Urkel or something. Look up here. You want wisdom, mister. You gotta ask God for it. Ask Solomon if there's any prophet in prayer, and he became the wisest man that ever lived. Let's ask, hey, let's ask Peter. Peter, is there any prophet in prayer? And he became a rock. Paul was caught up to the third heaven. Ask him if there's any prophet in prayer. You know who I want to ask? Don't put, the, don't, don't put your pen down. Put your pen down. Because this is not in your outline. We ask the sinner, is there any prophet? We ask the saint if there's any prophet, Roger. Let's ask the Savior if there's any prophet in prayer. <laughs> Did you know that Jesus began his earthly ministry in prayer? You know how he ended his ministry on prayer on the cross? The last thing he said, he prayed to his father. Let's ask Jesus if there's any prophet in prayer when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and prayed, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Ask Jesus if there was any prophet in prayer when he made his way to Golgotha. The first prayer he prayed on the cross was, Father, you hear me, bunch of Baptists? The first prayer he prayed on the cross was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. These people. <laughs> These people said, is there any prophet in prayer? Ask the sinner. Ask the saints. Ask the Savior, you can put this in your outline now. Let's ask the sick. Let's ask the sick if there's any prophet in prayer. We're fixing, to, we're fixing to do something we hadn't done in a long time. We're fixing to call people up. We're going to start praying for people in this church. We're going to gather around people. We're going to pray for the sick that are here. We're going to pray for the sick at home. Amen. We want people online to know the prayer's back in the house. Woo-hoo. We got people hurting here. Whether they're members or not, we got to love them and pray for them. Look up here. Let's ask the sick. How about old King Hezekiah? Isaiah chapter 38. The Bible said he was sick nigh unto death, and Isaiah the prophet walked into King Hezekiah's room and he said, Set your house in order, sir, you're fixing to die. And the Bible says in Isaiah 38 that Hezekiah turned and prayed to the Lord, and God gave him 15 more years. Let's ask Hezekiah if there's prophet in prayer. Let's ask that mama who's praying over that sick child. One reason I love this little girl here, I love all your family, but this one here especially. Come here, Kimberly. If you would, okay, if you'd hug me when you come in, we wouldn't do this. Get, get over here, let's go hurry up. That's your fault. Don't be blaming me. (laughs) Rob and his family came to this church. She could not walk. Time and time again, we was at Fort Worth Children's Hospital where she was having 10 to 12 hour surgeries on her brain. As Rob and Chris, there's power and prayer for their daughter. This little girl couldn't walk when we came. This church started praying for her. We love you. She's a miracle. 
She's a miracle, and I love you dearly. How many of mamas have prayed over their sick children? How many of us daddies have prayed over our children? They're sick. This old COVID-19, we can't go to the hospitals like we used to. My good friend, Goat and Beverly, I love them. They were members of this church. They both got saved at Robinwood Baptist Church in Seagaville, Texas. They were on their way last Sunday here, one of those that you couldn't say, well, I, I, we wondered if you was going to come. We was betting whether or not you has come, you Jimite. I'm glad I didn't hear you say that, mister. I'm glad I didn't hear you say that, ma'am. But they were on their way last Sunday and he got sick and they had to rush him to Flower Mound Hospital. Put him on the COVID-19 floor. Last Sunday, he's on his way here. Breaks my heart that I couldn't go because I'd have been there. All I could do is like you and I can now is call them on the phone and say, Go, we're praying for you. Bless God, they begin to run all kinds of tests. Thought he had that blood infection. Found out he had pneumonia. Ask God if there's any profit in prayer. <laughs> Let's ask that doctor. Let's ask that doctor who comes in that waiting room and says, I don't know, we couldn't find the tumor. We know there was a tumor there. But we went in and we couldn't find the tumor. <laughs> That's that doctor. <laughs> if there's power in prayer. One last person I want to ask. Don't put it up yet. Oh, you already got it up. We're going to work on this together, Maddie. I wish it was your daddy. I could get on to your, him, but I can't get on to Maddie. <laughs> you know who I want to ask more than anybody? Is there any prophet in prayer? I want to ask Satan. I want to ask, I want to ask Mr. Satan. Look up here, guys. I want to ask Mr. Satan if there's prophet in prayer. Because let me tell you something, friends. Satan don't fear our preaching. He don't fear our singing. He don't fear our teaching. He don't fear our buildings. He don't fear our programs. He fears the weakest saint on their knees. We're through. I want you to turn to Mark chapter 8. And we're through. Mark chapter 8, please, everyone, turn to Mark chapter 8. Brian, we're ready. You know, there used to be Kleenex boxes up here because people was crying and slinging snot used to. Where's the Kleenex boxes now for the tears? We used to have them scattered all over here because people would come and weep. The Bible's right here in your hand. That's all that matters. Don't worry about where the Bible is. You bring your Bible. That was a good answer too, wasn't it? Everybody look up here. Whew. 
Mark chapter 8. If you got it, say you got it. Look up here for a moment, please. Every verse we looked at this morning had the word prophet in it. Is that right? I want you to see Jesus use that word prophet. Just one verse. Look up here. Jesus used that verse. He used that word prophet. Look what he says, please, in Mark chapter 8. Be sure to circle it. Verse 36. Mark 8, 36. Jesus said, What shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Look up here, church. You know the difference. You know the difference between money and time. Everybody look up here. You say you do, but you know where I'm going. You know the difference between money and time. We all know how much money we got. Look up here. Would you say amen to that? I don't know how much money I got because my wife's got it all. But she can tell you. Look up here, please. The difference between money and time is that we know how much money we have, but look up here. None of us know how much time you have. There's not a one of us here who knows how much time you have. Satan's motto is another time, another place. Jesus says, here and now. You know why? Because Proverbs 27, 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for no man knows what a day will bring forth. If you would have been with me in that church, First Baptist Church I was preaching at, that Sunday morning, and the lady died in the fourth chair. One, two, three. Three, four, she died right here. This is not First Baptist, so it's not this church. My wife was there. That lady fell, collapsed before she hit the ground. She was dead. None of us have assurance of tomorrow. If you're here this morning, you're watching by online, are you here this morning? Look up here, please. If you don't have 100% assurance that your name has been written in the Lounge Book of Life, today on August 30th, 2020, you can have that assurance. You say, well, Brother Jim, I've joined the church. That's not going to take you to heaven. I've been baptized. That's not going to take you to heaven. I know John 3, 16. The devil knows it too. say I know I'm going to heaven because I believe in Jesus James 2 says the demons believe in Jesus there's some of you here some watching online you've never been saved and you fooled everybody but God let me tell you what profit is of giving your heart and life to Jesus to know that you know that you know know. the difference is heaven and hell today if you'd like to have that assurance someone comes up to you and says sir are you a Christian you can say what Ricky when November 17th what November 17th 1991 this drug addict realized he was a sinner opened up the door of his heart and invited Jesus in and God's still changing his life we're not what we ought to be but bless God we're not what we used to be Today can be your spiritual birthday. If you're not sure you made that commitment, God's Word says if you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. You listening to me, folks at home? If you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, 
If you believe in your heart, God raised from the dead, you can be saved today. I'm not playing games. I'm talking about your eternal soul. Please. You'd like to make that commitment to me today. I'm going to ask every head to be bowed and every eye to be closed at home here at Cornerstone. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If God's Holy Spirit has spoken to your heart today, say, Pastor, I believe in Jesus and I love Jesus. I don't know if I ever made a commitment to Him. I prayed that sinner's prayer, but guys, you can pray that sinner's prayer in one of two ways, from your head or your heart. You can mouth a few words and think you're going to heaven. That's not going to take you to heaven. It's got to be a prayer, a commitment from your heart. Eternity is too long to be wrong. If you'd like to make that commitment to him today on August 30th, 2020, would you pray this prayer in your heart as I pray it out loud? Would you pray this prayer? Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Without you, I know I'm lost. But today, dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Right now, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you're at home, you prayed that prayer. God bless you, my friend. If you're here at Cornerstone, sir, ma'am, young person, did you pray that prayer from your heart? God bless you. Someone asks you tomorrow, are you a Christian? You can say, August 30th, 2020, I asked Jesus in my heart. Jesus said, if you're not ashamed of me, I won't be ashamed of you. Here's an opportunity for you to make a stand for Jesus. You say, Brother Jim, I prayed that prayer. I prayed it from my heart. If you prayed that prayer, would you raise your hand? Just raise it high. Anybody here? Just raise your hand high. Say, Pastor, I pray that. God bless you, sweetheart. Anybody else? Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Greatest decision you'll ever make. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. You just raised your hand. You know who you are. Would you look right here at me? You pray that prayer with me, sir. Come here. God bless you. Come here. Come here, my Young ladies crying. Jan Gruber. This lady works at Ballard Street Cafe. Her and her boyfriend came today, and she just prayed the sinner's prayer. She didn't come to join the church. You give your heart and life to Jesus. Look at this brokenness. It's what it's all about. Look up here, guys. Everybody look up here now. There's some of you need to join the church. You know what? My membership is at Victory Church, Square Roster, because I'm on staff there. But I'm moving my membership back here because I'm going to have dual membership. Now, I'm not going to be re-baptized. Some of you want that. That ain't going to happen. But I'm joining this church this morning. I'm going to be preaching here, serving here. I need to be here. There's some of you need to come join the church. God's called you here. We need all the help we can, guys. And some of you need to come. Say, so you know what? This is where God's led us. We'd like to be a part of this fellowship. All right, let's play something else now. I'm getting tired of that. Let's play something else right quick. Everybody look up here, please. I want us to pray some people now. Put your mask on. And we're going to pray for some people here. Lenny is back there. Her husband just got out of the hospital. He's in rehab. I want Deborah. Would you come here, sweetie, and your precious daughter? Look up here, church. James Butterford is fixing to go home. I saw him yesterday. I called Jan this morning at 8 o'clock. He's fixing to be with Jesus. He might be with Jesus now. That's a hallelujah. I want to pray. The funeral's going to be here. But I want to pray for Jan and her family. Deborah's all part of their Sunday school class, Deborah. We're going to pray for Jan, her family. Hospice is there. I want to pray for that family. Michael, come here. I want to pray for your dad. 
Goats. Roger. Scott. I want us to pray for our brother Goat. Come on, Steve. Had pneumonia. Pray for him. Amen. Jesus. Just something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, oh, let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name Jesus 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 oh there's just something about that name Master Savior Jesus Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. and kingdoms will all pass away but there's something about that name Jesus, oh Jesus, oh there's just something about that name. He is master, he is savior, he is Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. 
Jesus, oh Jesus, my Jesus. Oh, let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away, but there's something about that name Oh, there is a river of gladness that pours from Emmanuel's veins This sinner was plunged Beneath the flood and got saved. Since then I walk in forgiveness. All of my guilt was erased. The chains of the past, oh, they're broken at last. I got saved. Oh, I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I got Jesus. How could I want more? Oh, I've received nothing but goodness. I've tested and I've tasted your grace. Oh, I was so lost till I fell at the cross and got saved. Oh, I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I got Jesus. How could I want more? The love of God, oh, it gave me his pardon. The love of God won't let me stay the same. The love of God, oh, it pulls me up higher. His will is stronger. That's why I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I got Jesus. How could I want more? I'm undone. All God's, all God's people said, okay, I got it, Brian. Everybody look up here. Ain't God good? Guys, let me tell you, I got a gentle, a gentle rebuke. It wasn't that gentle, Brian, but he said, let me tell you, the reason we don't have Phoenix down here because we got COVID-19 on people blowing snot on each other. So when they come back, be careful blowing snot on each other. And we got Bibles in every chair. We got Bibles in our hands. We need to have Bibles in our heart. God is good. To God be the glory. You may be seated. We want to recognize these folks that made decisions for Jesus. Amen. And Ashley, would y'all come here? Where's Michael and Ashley at? Oh, there they are. Praise the Lord. Guys, if you hadn't met this family yet, you need to meet them. I would love you guys. Ashley, God bless you, sweetie. Let me tell you, Michael gave me his father's number in Modesto, California, because they retired after 18 years at one church. He's been pastoring for many, many years in England, Georgia, California. But you know, there was an instant bond with me and your dad. 
And uh, it's like we've known each other all of our lives because that's the way Jesus works. This family is what a blessing. They're precious children and family. They come today to be a part of our fellowship. And uh, we thank God for them. Kaylee, you and Ethan, come here. God bless you. Come here, babe. This little girl was so broken. Let me tell you, Wolf and I and Brian, we eat every once in a while at Ballard's. Can I have an amen? amen. <laughs> Since I'm retired, that's all I can afford. But we go several times. Scott, several times. This little girl is one of our waitresses. She loves Jesus. <laughs> Their little precious boyfriend, Ethan. They come this morning making their public profession of faith. And uh, thank you, Jesus. You don't want to miss, miss tonight at 6 o'clock as Brother Rob continues our Sunday night study. Brian's continuing his study on Wednesday nights, the Ten Commandments. And uh, guys, as soon as we get word out uh, about Brother James Botterford, I'll get in touch with Brian and he can do the email, let everybody know. But the services will be here. And uh, so be, keep them in your prayers. Kathy and I were going on vacation this week. My wife has not had a vacation since this COVID started. And we're going to go to Austin to see Christian and Hannah. We hadn't seen their new apartment, their condo where they live, and go see our grandson and his wife. We married them on Father's Day. And see my oldest daughter and her children. And so I'll be here for the funeral and I'll come back next Sunday because I will not miss two Sundays in a row and I won't miss any more Sundays, Lord willing. But I'll drive back to be here next Sunday morning and then go back to Austin. Then the following Sunday, I'll be in East Texas doing a crusade in Houston County, Texas. And uh, Brother Rob will be sharing Jesus with us. And I'm not... I'm not leaving my home church, Big, uh, Victory or Cornerstone. Uh, I'll be back next Sunday, even if I have to drive back from Austin. I don't want to miss what God's doing here. Amen. And uh, guys, we've got to pray for one another. We're excited what Jesus is doing. And we just say to God be the glory. Amen. Heavenly Father, thanks don't seem enough. It just don't seem enough. But Lord, we just want to worship you and praise you today. Like the 10 lepers you healed, only one came back to say thank you. And Lord, we fall on our knees before you and give you the honor and glory and the praise for your Holy Spirit's presence here today. Thank you for the showers you sent us early this morning, the physical showers. We needed it. You cooled the weather down for us. We appreciate it. Lord, we thank you most of all for those spiritual showers that, have, that you showered us with here this morning. Lord, may we never, for your glory, have to ask, is there any value in serving Jesus? If there's any value in spiritual blessings, or if there's any value in the power of prayer. May we always, Heavenly Father, keep the main thing, the main thing here at Cornerstone that's exalting and magnifying the Lord Jesus Christ. walking on our knees and seeing people come to know Jesus. May we love one another more than we've ever loved. Excited about being a part of the family of God. We love you. We thank you. We need you. And all God's people at home and all God's people here said, God bless you, church. Be sure to hug these people, shake their hands. And welcome, everybody. God bless you. Thank you.